Thank you, Angie, and I need to do a little self-disclosure. I am a pediatric occupational therapist, and I serve with the birth to age 21 population, so I needed to give that to you right up front here. I want you to think for a moment whether or not you believe that students with intellectual disabilities belong in college. And hold that thought as I talk through my talk. This is running a little bit faster. So just as with their same age peers, students with intellectual disabilities also want to go to college. They also want to have a quality life and to have a job that is not only one that they get to select that's meaningful to them, but also is a competitive wage job with benefits. But that's often not what's happening to this population. They are a population that is significantly underrepresented in college and has the highest unemployment rate of any disability group at all. And in 2010, the reauthorization of the Higher Education Opportunity Act flung open the doors for students with intellectual disabilities to be able to come to college. But there was a problem with that. The problem was that there's been persisting marginalization of this population of students. And the reason is because there's been very low performance expectations for them in the K-12 through system all the way through. As well, they have persisting adaptive behavior challenges. That's daily living care, being able to figure out transportation, money management, etc. So it made them unprepared for life. It also made them lacking awareness of their own disability, as well as how to ask for accommodations and supports throughout the systems. Okay. I need to remember to put my slides forward, so I apologize about slipping through that really quickly. Okay, the other issues are we have not really known what are the uh, needs of this population of students because they're new to the college environments. And one of the things we found is they have low adaptive behavior skills on all aspects of life. The academic readiness skills are really low, particularly executive function, task organization, being able to read, write, etc. Some basic skills that you came into college with because you were prepared for them, they're not being prepared very well for them. All of those things fall under the profession of occupational therapy. The challenge is that most of these students get discharged out of occupational therapy at the age of 12 as they're entering into secondary school rather than being able to continue to receive the services through high school and on into college to be able to help them attain the skills that they need to be independent and functional. I apologize about this. The thing is that if they get, and this is for anybody, if they get um, at least some post-secondary education, they're able to increase their wage by nearly 73%, which is a huge benefit for this population, as well as any population group. The other is it helps them to get better integrated into the community and to be included within the community as a contributing member of that community. And finally, um, in the next eight to 10 years, we're gonna be seeing an increase in the population of people with autism spectrum disorder and dual diagnosed with intellectual disabilities coming into college, and we're not quite prepared for them. So the purpose of my research was to look at what are the needs and does it fall under the scope of practice of my profession, occupational therapy. I did a case study of a local college who are, is serving um, students with intellectual disabilities and um, asked the stakeholders, interviewed them, I mean, which attended classes with them to observe what was happening within the classes, conducted document reviews, and then did intensive interviews with all of them. And it was a powerful experience for me. What we found with this is that, yes, they do have low adaptive behavior skills on all areas across all of the students. The other thing was they were very unfamiliar with occupational therapy, and in particular, those who were actually receiving it didn't even know they were getting it or what it was. Big problem for my profession. The other was my profession needs to have a systems change. It needs to transform itself so that we actually start working with the adaptive behavior skills and help those students be able to transition into adulthood much more effectively. And finally, all of the stakeholders had hope for the future that these young people would be able to live independently, function independently, and get a job that they wanted that had competitive wage for it. I liken this to a calla lily bulb. And the students are like a calla lily bulb. You need to properly have a good context for them. You need to give them good nourishment, and then they can blossom into what they are meant to be. And that's what you'd like to do for this population of students. 
And what I'm hoping is that you will think about this population and you will consider them as people who are capable and able to do much more than they have been asked to do in the past. And that you'll give them an opportunity for employment, consider donating for scholarship funds for them to go on to college, and support them in your inclusive communities. Thank you.